this is Magna and welcome back to my modding tutorial series for Rome 2 Total War. In this tutorial uh, we're going to add another unit to the unit base pack and I'll show you how that's done pretty quickly actually. Uh, we'll start off in this one just showing you how to add one single unit uh, and in the next episode I'll do um, how to add multiple units at the same time in the method that I use to make it really quick. So we'll start off by creating a new variant mesh definition, or well, we'll copy one from vanilla to work with. Oh, sorry, variant mesh definitions. And you can here you can see all the unit variant mesh definitions for the vanilla units, and we'll also go into our whip folder, and we'll copy one of them across. So let's do a the the unit that's currently in the unit base pack is a spear unit, so we'll do a sword unit for this one. So we'll go down, pick a random sword unit. Iberian Scutari for perhaps. We'll paste that in there. Let's rename it. Mag shoot sword. We can also edit that a little bit if we want. I uh, probably won't, but you can see here that it's got a pylum, so it's got a, a, a javelin t uh, weapon, it's got a sword, it's got a scooter shield, it's got uh, this, this armor, this chest armor is like one of those discs or, that you see, um, and just some helmets, okay. We're look, looking at this just to give you a basic idea of what kind of uh, values we'll assign it when we look through the database table. We don't really need it much apart from that. So let's now add that to the pack. So we go to our pack, open it up. We have click on variant mesh definitions here, right click, add files, and we can go to tutorial where we saved that. We copied that. Um, new variant mesh definition and we'll open. It's green and now we can save it and we'll go black. Now we want to add that to the database tables, the DB tables, so that it actually appears in game and has stats and all that kind of stuff. The way I do it is I go in reverse alphabetical order. So I'll add the variant mesh definition first and then I'll start here at the bottom one. To do that you'll have to have combo boxes ticked off, unticked, like here. It comes ticked as default. If you don't untick that, you'll have to do it all in a certain order. So first things first is we will copy, we'll clone this row. So you click the one on the side, so to select the whole row, and then click clone rows, and it makes a copy. The error down here just means that there's two of the same thing there. We don't need that. And now we'll copy the name here exactly. To avoid typos, we'll right click, rename, and then copy the name part and paste it in here. And just to make it nice, we'll capitalize everything. Okay. The military, this, this table here, it refers to uh, which groups of factions can recruit this unit in, in the campaign game. So it won't affect uh, the, ca the custom battles which we're going to test it in, but it affects the campaign. Um, so we can leave it at that because we're not going to really show the effect of that in this tu tutorial. Also, in this tutorial we're not setting up uh, which buildings can recruit that unit. So the next thing we'll do is we'll copy the name from here. So we go copy this is the name we're going to use. We always, I always use copy and paste, otherwise you risk making a typo, which will stop your mod from loading. And we'll save it also. I always save after every edit, just to be on the safe side. Again, we'll click on the one in the custom battle permissions table. This table here uh, determines which factions in custom battles uh, can recruit this unit. So we'll clone it. And in the unit, we'll paste what we just had before. And also, we will make it a non-general unit. Now, you see, if you you might have noticed, but here the faction key in this table is different to the military group and faction key. 
Here it's Roman, and here it's Rom underscore Rome. To make sure you use the right faction key, and to use the right whatever things that are referring to, I always like to have open data underscore Rome 2 pack, from which has all the vanilla entries in it. So wait for that to open. <clears throat> and we'll just go to this table here. Unit custom units to custom battle. And there we go. So we can actually we can add, add this unit also to another faction, let's say Carthage. So there's the Carthage, Rome Carthage. Just to make sure that we get it in the right one. Uh, let's make the Carthage one a non general and make the Rome one a general, actually. Um, yeah, okay, now, now we'll be able to recruit this same unit from in custom battle with both Rome and Carthage. Okay, let's save it again. I like to keep these tables open once I've edited them, just so I know that I've already done them. If I have to walk or get or go away from the computer while I'm halfway through editing, uh, adding units, I can just come back and know exactly where I'm at. Okay, now we go to unit variants. In this table, uh, this is where it links all the different parts of the unit. So the name is coming from this folder here, the text folder. Uh, so you, and then the unit is coming from main units tables. <clears throat> and the variant is obviously is linking to this one here. And the unit card links to the UI here. And this kind of just brings them all together. So what you can do, if you wanted, you could have the same unit, but with a different variant. Um, or you can change the name, give it, you know, in here, and keep the stats all the same and the costs and everything. So you could have three units with exactly the same stats, all with different names by changing what this is and linking it where it links to here. And you can also have them three unit stats with three different appearances based on uh, what variant mesh definitions you have, all three different unit cards, whatever you want to do. The height scale here refers to the the height entry in the battle entities table, and it multiplies against it. The default for the vanilla entry for infantry is 1.7, and I think that's meters. So the, if you have one here, the average height of each unit will be 1.7 meters, and the height variation will be 0 0.05. So that means the units in uh, what we create will vary between 1.05 uh, will we'll vary 0 0.05 from that. Uh, and just to illustrate that, let's change this to a ridiculous number and change this also to a ridiculous number. And now we see huge height variation in the unit we create, just for fun. Oh, sorry, that's the... First we have to clone the row. So that's the unit was already in the base pack. So firstly we're going to clone the row. Um, then we copy, go here, we just copy it again. And we're only going to add the unit and the variant. Everything else doesn't really matter. And then we can make it ridiculously tall with huge variation. Just for laughs. And I'll save that again. Next one. This one I always compare to similar units in vanilla um, because not all units have to be in this table. For instance, uh, javelin units you don't put into this table. They just get excluded. Um, so what we want, first again, we clone it, click on the one, clone, and then we're going to go find, we can paste in our unit name that we already had copied from the previous one, and now we need to find the unit set that we're going to assign to it. So if we go into the vanilla files, diorome on two, and we're going to go to unit set to unit junctions. Here it is. We can find a unit which is similar. By similar, yeah. So essentially all we want is a sword unit, really. Um, so we can go down. We want to look in this column. So we're looking for any of the units here. And a sword unit would be 
Yeah, why not this one? Unit sets, Malay unit swords. That's appropriate for what we've just added. So we can copy that and paste it in here. And then I'll copy back the name of the unit which we'll need in the next table. And the next time we go into mag, uh, we go into main units. Again, we clone. Click on the one and we clone the row. Now there's two ways we can do this here. What I usually do is I'll copy a similar unit from the vanilla main units table and I'll copy the entire row. Alternatively, we can just go through manually and do it. We can just paste it into here and paste it into here. The name goes into two positions. This one, this column here links to the land units table where the unit statistics are. And this is a key which we have generated, which will be read by the unit variance tables. And then you have a bunch of other stuff here, including indexes. Let's, uh, they have to be unique, so let's change that to one. Or we can even right click on the unit index and click the renumber cell. And then, for instance, put in 100,000. It gives them all a chronology, Chrono puts them all in order. So 100,000, then next one's one, and etc. etc. Um, okay, so that's. We can do it that way. Oh, let's just go and do it the other way quickly. Main units. Ooh, don't need that. Click across if that happens. Let's find a unit. We got the Scutari, didn't we? So that's uh, Iberian. Okay, so we copy the Iberian Scutari. Uh, we can just copy if you want like that, or you right click, or Control C, however you want to do it. Select the whole row, and then paste. And it all changes to that. And then of course we have to change the name again in those two positions. For the land unit reference, and also for what we refer to uh, in variance tables. <coughs> You can see here there's a, a column here called is naval. What that means is it's a naval unit. So we're not we're going to create a land unit, so we don't need to have that ticked. But if we want to create a naval unit, this unit would actually link also to uh, it would be recruited in uh, you you would see the unit on ships and not as an individual land unit. Um, anyway, we can do that in another tutorial. Making na naval units. Okay, so now we've done that table, let's go to land units, and it's the same thing here again. We can either go in to each individual cell and kind of change them, so infantry melee is fine. The class would have to be changed to whatever the class is in the land units, which would also be uh, inf underscore uh, melee, I think. Let's have a look. There you go, inf melee would be used. You can do that all for each and every single uh, one, but I'm just the the other shortcut would be like I did before. We could find a similar unit and we just copy the whole paste, copy and paste the whole thing, and then we just change what we want to change. So again, we'll go down to Iberian Scutari, and we can copy that, select here, and paste. All right, and then we just get the unit name. And here we have to put it in one position. And now you can see that the animation, this is the mo one of the most important parts of it, is the animation. The animation here determines uh, yeah, how the man's going to fight. Um, if you use the wrong animation, the weapon won't show up or something like that. So you can see this is the original one with the spear, and here's one with the sword. Okay, so we've done that. Lastly but not leastly, I just like to add this one. Again, we'll clone the row, place in the unit name. This is deter determines the value the AI gives to each unit when calculating whether to recruit it. Um, you can just make up a number relative to the other numbers you see. Or you can create some kind of calculation uh, formula. It's up to you. How you want to do it? Um, CIR. Okay. 
and then just find a group key which is similar to the unit. So this isn't a speed unit we've just created, we've created a sword unit. So let's uh, infantry melee, that'll work. Input whatever figure, whatever number you want in there. And of course, save it. And that's done. We should be able to check out that unit in game now. And here are our units, the giants that we just created. Let's move them away. You can see huge variation as we created in the variant uh, unit variance tables. Some are really small, some are really big because of that one variation we put in there. There's a vanilla general, we don't need it. And again for Rome, the exact same thing. So here we are in the custom battle setup. Uh, the unit we created is here in the melee infantry. So we can add that, pick a random general. And it's also available in Rome, because that's where we put it. So uh, let's get rid of the random setup. You can see here in Rome we gave it as a general unit, and so they're both two types of general units. Whereas the Carthage one was not set up as a general unit. Now let's check them out in game. <laughs>